In this question, a uniform angular disc of outer radius capital R and inner radius small r is coaxially mounted on a fixed cylinder. The radius of the cylinder is slightly smaller than the inner radius of the disc to allow the disc to rotate as a pulley and the fixed cylinder as an axle. Coefficient of friction between the disc and the cylinder is equal to mu. A light inextensible roof supporting two loads of masses small m capital M where capital M is greater than small m passes along the upper half periphery of the disc. Find the acceleration A of the load M capital M and acceleration due to gravity is G. So here these are the two loads and the string is passing over this disc and disc is mounted on this axle and uh, the inner radius of the axle is uh, slightly greater than the radius of this cylinder. So let us first make some free bar diagrams and uh, let us try to understand how this axle is exerting force on this disc. This is very important to solve this particular question. So I am making the free bar diagram of this uh, disc and uh, I am taking uh, this much amount of a string with this disc. So we have a free board diagram on our free board diagram of a disc. So I'm making a BD of a disc with the, this much part of this string so that I can represent the tension in the string. So this is the disc here. And this is the annular disc. This is the outer part and this is the inner part of the disc. So this is the disc on the disc here we have a string so i am taking this string and this string is going something like this on the periphery and this much amount of a string i have taken because tension force you can only represent tension force in the string so tension suppose tension here is uh, let's say t1 in this string and in this string in this portion of the string tension is t2 so this is T1 downward here and T2 downward here. I am making an assumption to solve this problem that uh, the disc is massless. So I am taking disc as massless or of negligible mass. So disc is of negligible mass. So this is the assumption to solve this problem. Now the force of interaction between the cylinder and this disc or we can say pulley so this disc is rotating something like this so disc is rotating something like this if disc is rotating something like this then friction friction will try to prevent this kind of rotation it will friction will provide some kind of anti-clockwise rotation so friction is obviously tangential to the surface but uh, what is the point of application of friction where the friction force is actually act acting suppose if you make free bar diagram something like this suppose if we show the friction at this point and if we consider that system is vertically rigid kuch is tarike ka system agar hum dekhe vertically rigid type ka ki yahan par ye jo portion hai at this portion there is contact is maintained Obviously, the radius of the cylinder is slightly less than the radius of the disc. So, cylinder and disc will be in contact at some particular location only. There won't be any contact throughout this contact surface between the cylinder and disc. So, if I am assuming that contact point is at the topmost point like this, then this is friction and this is normal reaction acting on this disc. And since this disc is of negligible mass, so net torque and net force on this disc should be equal to zero. So if we see in the vertical direction, then this uh, normal can be equal to T1 plus T2. But uh, we will have uh, this force friction, friction force in the horizontal direction, which will give unbalanced force in the horizontal direction. So this cannot be the situation like this. We cannot have the unbalanced force so obviously this is not the contact point here obviously so contact point will be shifted somewhere here at some this kind of location because uh, this mass is greater than this and uh, this portion of disc is pressing hard here so we can assume that at some point 
there is the point of uh, contact and there is point of application of friction and normal reaction. So I am making another free board diagram and in which I am showing the correct direction of friction and normal reaction. So this is our disc and this part is solid and uh, suppose normal and friction are acting at this particular location. So friction will be something like this, friction is like this and normal obviously passing through the center and normal is something like this. Here we will have uh, T1 as shown the previous diagram, here we will have T2 and suppose uh, this angle is theta, we do not know the location where the forces are acting. So I am assuming it as some general theta angle and we can find theta using some equations. So and this friction obviously there is a slipping here. So this friction will be mu into n. So friction in terms of normal is known here. So friction is equal to mu constant friction multiplied by this normal reaction. So let us uh, write the equation of equilibrium for this disc. So for rotational equilibrium net torque about the center of the disc is equal to 0 and uh, obviously the torque due to T2 will be clockwise, T1 is anti-clockwise and friction is also anti-clockwise. So torque due to this T2 will be T2 multiplied by this capital R, this radius is capital R and this radius is small r. So T2 multiplied by capital R, this is uh, my clockwise torque and this clockwise torque is balanced by the anti-clockwise torque of T1 and this uh, friction, normal is passing through the center. So T1 multiplied by capital R and this friction should be multiplied with a small r and this friction we can write this is equal to mu into n. So T2 r is equal to T1 r this is mu n into small r this is my equation number 1. This is from translational uh, rotational equilibrium of this disc and now the translational equilibrium. So I am uh, balancing the forces along horizontal and vertical direction. So let us take the components. First, I am balancing the forces in the horizontal direction, this, this angle is theta and this angle is theta. This is the vertical line, this angle is 90 minus theta, so this angle is theta here. So force along horizontal should be balanced. So along horizontal, uh, this normal has component n cos theta and this friction obviously has component sin theta in terms of sin theta. So this is mu n sin theta, friction is mu n, this n and this n is cancelled. So here we will find tan theta as 1 by mu. So from this equation we can find the value of theta. So this is our equation number 2 which will give us the value of theta. Now in the vertical direction, in the vertical direction forces are balanced. So friction and normal has vertical component like this. Friction has uh, mu n cos theta component and this normal has sin theta component and sin theta this would be equal to T1 plus T2 and in this equation we can put the value of cos theta and sin theta. So here tan theta is equal to 1 by mu. So this kind of triangle we can expect 1 by mu and this is obviously 1 plus mu square under root. So this is the uh, triangle and from which we can write the cos theta and sin theta values. So this is mu. Uh, normal we can take as common and this is mu cos theta from here will be mu divided by under root 1 plus mu square and sin theta we can write 1 divided by 1 plus mu square. Uh, solving it is 1 plus mu square divided by under root 1 plus mu square and you can write it as n under root 1 plus mu square this is equal to t1 plus t2. So we can write this equation n under root 1 plus uh, mu square this is equal to t1 plus t2. So this is my equation number 3. From this equation we must try to eliminate normal reaction because uh, after we write, write the equation for Newton's laws of uh, motion on this small m and capital M there is no normal reaction coming afterwards. So from this equation let us try to eliminate this normal reaction at least. So let us try to eliminate normal reaction and uh, to eliminate normal reaction in equation 1 it can be written as T2R minus T1R. You can put T1R on the left hand side 
so it is t2 r minus t1 r this should be equal to mu1 into r so divide 1 and 3 in such a manner that normal reaction is cancelled so we can easily do that it is very simple mathematically we can write t2 minus t1 into r from equation number 1 this is mu n r and uh, from here we can write uh, t2 plus t1 this is equal to n under root 1 plus mu square just divide these two equation and after dividing we can easily write it as t2 minus t1 divided by t2 plus t1 1 r is here and this is mu r divided by under root 1 plus mu square and that r will come like this so this is equal to this and this whole thing mu r divided by a capital r 1 plus mu square this whole thing is constant and uh, let us assume this whole thing as gamma do not confuse with a small r this is small r and this is gamma so i am uh, for calculation purpose i am just assuming this whole constant is equal to gamma now we have relation between t2 and t1 so till now we have relation between t2 and t1 and this relation will be used further so i am writing further equations obviously this small m will go up with some acceleration a and this capital m will go down with some acceleration a with the same acceleration a so writing nlm equation for these two blocks so this t1 is acting upward this mg is acting downwards this t2 is upwards and this capital mg is downwards so newton laws of motion equation for a small m and capital m so two straightforward equations from here so equations are t1 minus small mg this is equal to ma this is my equation number 5 and uh, capital mg minus t2 this is equal to capital ma this is my equation number 6 so 4 5 and 6 if we if we see 4 5 and 6 we have variables t1 t2 and a and obviously we have three equations 4 5 and 6 so from here we can find t1 t2 and a and to find a we have to eliminate t1 t2 so how to eliminate t1 t2 so again this is some mathematical calculations to uh, uh, solve these equations obviously three equations not very uh, sometimes not very easy to solve and we can use equation number four in a smartly like this we can use equation number four something like this we can use compoundendo and dividendo like this this is uh, equation number 4 i am writing again t2 minus t1 divided by t2 plus t1 t2 plus t1 this is i can write gamma by 1 and from this equation i can write it like this comprendo dividendo t2 plus t1 minus t2 minus t1 and it is t2 plus t1 plus t2 minus t1 obviously there are there can be more mathematical ways to solve these three equations so uh, whatever i am writing is one of those solutions mathematical solution so t2 plus t1 for that we have to write 1 plus gamma and uh, t2 plus sorry in the numerator i am i have done minus 1 minus gamma and it will be 1 plus gamma uh, what is uh, on lhs this t2 t2 will be cancelled so this is equal to t1 by t2 so we know the ratio of t1 by t2 in terms of gamma here and now we have to eliminate t1 and t2 so from equation number 5 you can write the value of t1 what is the value of t1 from equation number 5 this is mg plus ma so for t1 you can put this and for t2 you can put capital mg minus capital ma this is 1 minus gamma divided by 1 plus gamma and obviously from this equation acceleration can be calculated very easily so acceleration after some rearrangement and calculation it can be written like this a is equal to g times capital m minus small m minus gamma m plus m in the denominator we will have m plus m in between there is again minus gamma this is capital m minus small m so this is the acceleration and uh, finally we have to put the value of gamma and what is gamma gamma is from equation number four so this is the final answer for acceleration